Afternoon. Good evening. Hello to you. My name is Rob, and welcome to the VidIQ uh, live stream that we run every Tuesday here. And this is your opportunity to get your advice, tips, tricks, guidance. Expert in quotation marks advice from two uh, experts here on YouTube, also in quotation marks. And I am, of course, joined as always by our resident actual YouTube expert who has experience working with uh, many channels, helping them to get billions of views. He's a thumbnail expert, skateboarding geek, uh, person who once said start a plane channel and get affiliate links from that. Jeremy Vess, welcome to the VidIQ virtual studio as always. How are you today? Your intros just get more ridiculous every week. I love it. <laughs> they certainly do. And thank you to Fusion there for the uh, super chat. Two pounds uh, from you. Thank you very much. We are all hyped, of course, for what is this week a channel audit special. Jeremy and I always discuss whether or not we should have that intro topic and then do channel audits. I'll just do channel audits. And we get the sense that you prefer just channel audits because it means more of you get the opportunity to have some personal uh, advice from us. So that's what we're going to do this week. And if you approve of that, give us a thumbs up. If you don't approve of that, give us a thumbs down in the uh, chat and it will help us. Um, thank you there to Leron, who's uh, moderating today, who says, this is a, an in-joke, 4 billion <laughs> organic views. Uh, that is what Jeremy has done here on uh, YouTube. I think I've done personally about 50 million views, so I'm well behind our expert who is over here. All right, folks, let's get straight into how the audits work here. If I press the right button. Uh, yes, that is the right button. So there is a form in the video description, which is to fill it out and submit your channel for review. Jeremy, have a guess. How many submissions do we already have this week? 78. We have 70, so you were almost right. Wow. Very close there, but 70. We're up to 71 now. Don't worry if you're filling out the form now. I do look at channels in, uh, throughout this live stream, and we will. Uh, I will add some more to this list. So we have some already lined up, but we will be adding more. Do not ask for a review audit in the live chat, because Leron, who is there, the moderator, uh, may ban you or time you out, because we simply do not have the capacity to manage it from the uh, chats. And while we are getting super chats in which are very welcome another one from iFusion here we will not take super chat submissions because we don't want to create a financial barrier to auditing your own chat uh, channel Apologies in advance if we cannot review your channel today. As I say, we're up to 74 submissions and we often get like more than 100 and we just can't cover every single channel each week. We go through as many as we can and I always move this over to Jeremy. If you could tell us in like 15 seconds, why should it, why is it important to watch every single audit that we do every single week? Well, basically... If we teach you how to fish, if you really study and look and, and figure out how me, myself, Leron, Travis, the whole vidIQ team, how we approach uh, with, you know, with all four of us, we've literally done thousands of audits over the years yeah. and uh, we found a pattern. And essentially the pattern is, does your channel have focus? Does it have good thumbnails? Is the title matching search intent? And if you really just study how we audit these channels you'll be able to do it yourself Absolutely, you'll be yeah. you'll be able to internalize it and that in itself will be a thousand times more powerful than us auditing a channel for you yep uh also uh if we do not have a chance to audit your channel today if you download the vidiq chrome extension there is this magical channel audit button here which is like your 24 7 youtube consultant and it will give you all sorts of information about your channel what you're doing right on your channel the um, uh, interactive things that are working well such as like top search terms uh, videos that are doing well in terms of bringing in subscribers watch time you can see there's a like a, a massive information here and you can use this every single day to get a snapshot on your channel and also there are things that are not doing working very well on your channel what can you get rid of trimming the fat that sort of thing and some final information about metadata when videos haven't been added to playlists all that sort of stuff it's all there and it is essential information that we have for you uh, in our channel audit tool and that is free to download with some sort of limitations a little bit in a free version but you still get more than 50 percent of the sort of uh, paid information that you might um, expect from it. And uh, I always finish off with this. Jeremy and I are giving you our 
uh, in first impressions of how what your channel looks like to us and uh, the wider YouTube community. Sometimes we get it wrong and we misinterpret it. But that's how other people are going to see your channel as well. So if it takes you like 10 minutes to tell us what your channel's about through the chat, then maybe you're not doing a good enough job selling your channel to an audience through the channel banner and the thumbnails and the titles. So that's another thing to uh, try and be aware of. And with all that being said, as uh, we say every single week, Jeremy, I'm going to now click some buttons for you, which should allow you to see my screen. Just give me a thumbs up when you can see that. Yep. Yep, okay, and so I'm going to just switch to that channel. And without further ado, Jeremy, are you ready to do some auditing this week? Let's do this. All right, just press my transition button. Sometimes I forget to do this, but this week we are going to do channel audits and we're going to focus on our first channel today, which I think is very interesting from a focus point of view, and it looks something like this. Bob's Watchers. First of all, I love the name Bob. Uh, any reasons for why that might be? Yeah, you can guess in the chat. This channel has uh, nearly 4,000 subscribers. And Jeremy, if we were to look at this channel straight off, like, if we ask the question, what is this channel about? I think we can get an immediate answer just from the visuals, the thumbnails. Uh, uh, yeah, I would say they're selling watches. Okay, so you think this is a, a, a business that's uh, yeah. selling watches, not necessarily uh, like a a classic tech YouTuber might be, or somebody who is sent these to uh, maybe sell an influence for a a company per se. This is a, a shop watch. And like from my perspective, just you know, the outsider looking in, because the the number of the watch is on there, like the Rolex Daytona uh, eleven thousand yeah, six hundred five. Yeah. Because yeah. of that, I almost feel like it's like a. I don't know. It just feels like more of a transaction than a review, like a, a, a library almost. Of, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. That's that, so. Yeah. This this could be like a channel which is putting videos on YouTube, but then they're actually presenting them mainly on their on a website potentially as, as a shop. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to click on these to to really understand what's going on. Okay, here. so yeah, I think I think this is a good one to sort of in, investigate a little bit more. I'll just try this one and see what happens. Like the logo, but uh, too long. I would, I would not, I would not start with the logo intro ever again. Six two six one. This watch contains an F serial number that was produced around two thousand three, with an oyster lock, sapphire crystal. So it's very much a camera down position, and I'm not sure if you. I don't think you can hear the audio. I'm not sure if you can, Jeremy, but. It's, it's talking very much about the like the, the number of the watch and the very basic functions of it. I'm not sure if there's much opinion being given on this watch from what I can see. Um, so I think from perhaps a, a destination uh, for somebody to, to visit the channel, do you think maybe it's lacking what we might describe as a personality or it's it's very uh, ob objective channel and that to me, might this not looks like classic e-commerce yeah uh, it looks like you're trying to rank for these numbers on google.com and youtube.com does this just with all due respect we're just looking from the outside looking in with first this impressions does not yeah. look like content that someone would want to watch it looks like content people might stumble upon it might even be uh possibly like um, videos that are in a e-commerce store, you know, yeah. or something like, but definitely if you want to really grow your channel, even though you almost have 4,000 subs, subscribe, congratulations, I would give true value. I would put your face in there and I would give a lot of entertainment or education on why someone's going to go buy a $20,000 watch. Um, personality is kind of everything on YouTube. So, Right now, it does seem to me and tell us if we're wrong that these are videos that are embedded on an e-commerce store or something like that. It doesn't seem to have a lot of the value uh, from the surface. Is that, yeah, this, this channel's been around for a long time, of course. There's one here with only over a million views from eight years ago. Uh, so God, there must be potentially thousands of videos on here. And uh, like in the recent months, uh, like a year ago, we were get, you were getting views with like... 10, 4,000. But I think what probably potentially the telltale sign here is that there's a video with five and a half thousand views, but it only has 34 likes, two dislikes. So the engagement rate is very low. 
And I would assume there's probably not that many comments as well. I'm just waiting for them to load up. But for some reason, it's going really slow. I imagine there's not that much going on. Um, my, inter my internet is slowing down. Okay, we may be dropping out a little bit here. Okay, it's come back up. So yeah, at zero comments as well. It should, uh, seems like a, a very, as you say, Jeremy, a telltale sign of this is e-commerce. It's It lacks perhaps the YouTube personality that it might need. Um, let's just have a look at that. I mean, in general, would you say that the, the thumbnails themselves seem pretty effective in terms of I, I would say they're too close to each other it actually uh this is you know i'm all about reputation alignment balance flow color uh, uh you know branding i'm all about that but in this case it actually even though one watch might be gold and one might be black it actually is kind of in my opinion a little boring okay and i would actually make the watches the hero and i would make the watches two to three times bigger than they are now and then I would actually have a background color. For example, the fourth th thumbnail on the top row <laughs> this one is here, a yeah. phenomenal thumbnail. Uh, and it has surprise, uh, has more more views as well, like, again. And this is a history. And so this was something a little different. It wasn't just a watch. Right. It was a history. So something a bit more educational, which uh, may uh, appeal to a YouTube audience. I was just looking down here. And what this suddenly made me think like what it was, Jeremy, is perhaps an eBay seller's marketplace. And it's just all very functional information, like the, the exact number of a watch. And you just take all of these pictures in 10 minutes and then and then stick them on eBay and sell them. And that that's kind of a vibe we're feeling overall, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so... Uh, just bring this all back to like a top level. Uh, Bob's Watches, you've got obviously some impact on YouTube with 4,000 subscribers. However, people seem to be coming only for specific uh, watches and they're not sticking around maybe for your whole general content, which she, which looks to be the case. And it kind of gives us the vibe of, a, of an e-commerce website as opposed to uh, a channel with personality opinions like which is the be better watches or the worst watches and maybe i think another thing is if it's antiques and collectibles i know this is going to sound perhaps a little clickbaity but just including potential values for these um watches may help on the thumbnail um like it could be for here for example it, you might want to include the reference number if that's what you feel is appropriate for your content but then it might be five hundred dollars question mark or or a thousand dollars or whatever just to again build a little bit more intrigue there that's bob's watches we'll move on to the next one here which is uh and i'll do my uh moving on to the next channel bell which is off the jacks. And I think, Jeremy, if you want to just take the lead with this one, with it being motor vehicles, I know you uh, have a little more experience with this than I do. What are we seeing here? First off, it's not called motor vehicles. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're so right. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so in the banner, the first thing I would do is I'd have like lots of cars and energy and excitement um, mm. in your face there. Also, you just have too much text. I just have off the jacks, have really cool pictures. Let, you know, if a picture is worth a thousand words, let the pictures tell the story and then have a few words of, you know, awesome car videos or whatever it is to really let people know quickly what the channel is about. Your thumbnails are actually quite good. Um, I don't, I, I was one of the first to start using in 2006, this concept of the left bar, yeah. you know, with for like uh, a lot of brands like Gillette, if you look at those, the left bar is is repeatable and it's good. But I will say, if in my opinion, if you want a higher click through rate, I would just actually make the cars bigger and not have that left bar anymore and just saturate your colors more. And it, it, it does feel yeah. a little last generation that doesn't it, in terms of the thumbnails. It, like they were effective once, but now we're sort of moving on a little bit. Uh, last year, I did a multivariant test to see if like that concept, you know, we were doing in 2006 and seven was still better. And what we found is if you just make, use that space for, for more picture and have more intrigue, more color pop and more saturation and sharpness, like yeah. then basically people are going to want to click on it more. So, the, um, you do want some type of, of repeatable elements, but what I've found is just having a little circle in the bottom left-hand side 
takes a lot less space and it's still noticeable. Focusing on one particular thumbnail here, I think this might be an example of a thumbnail which could do with a lot of improvement because it was a lack of focus on what we should be looking at here. We can see this vehicle in the bottom left-hand corner. I can see that it's got some teeth on it, but then we've just got a gaggle of people, which I'm not really sure works properly. So it's kind well, of... Well, if you, you look at the title, really? it's part. It, it, it is a party, yeah. So how how might that be improved in one sense? Um, should it be the focus is on the party or um, could it be people maybe surrounding? Um, what I think is like, this is a, feels like a bit like a freeze frame, and what you might have been able to do is get a few people to surround the front of that vehicle with um, with beer cans in their hands or like yeah. or something to signify a party. I'm just thinking how that could tell a better story in, in that thumbnail. And you make a good point. A lot of times, you guys all need to take still pictures when you're videoing for your thumbnails. Yeah, so I, you I, need to plan it out while you're filming. I was contrasting it against this one when I think, oh, wow, well, I really know what I should be looking at here. And it's like a metal engraved paint. And that, because it's zo cool. so zoomed in, that yeah. seems a lot more powerful in terms of a, a thumbnail. Yeah. And that's something most card nerds would click on for sure, because they're like, whoa, it's that. Uh, okay, so channel's got, just looking at the channel size, 200 subscribers. Uh, and there seems to be a lot of spikiness in the view counts. Like here, we've got 20 views, 11 views, and then some we've got hundreds of views. And it looked like Rat City or Rat Rods, uh, whatever that is or was, seemed to be performing really well. So strategy here for the video creator is that you may want to focus on Rat City if that is a term that can be used long term, or maybe it was a trending event, I'm not sure. Can you sort by most feed real quick? Yeah, uh, that's the next thing I was going to do. Is like, is, is there any particular videos that have really jumped out well? So there's nothing really jumping out here, but it looks like each time you pick up an on event, uh, then that does pretty well for the channel. And, and rat rod, I would I would do a whole series on building yeah. rat rods. Um, rat rods are basically just old cars that you make however you want and you know they don't have to look pretty mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean i i think there's obviously a lot of search intent around rat rod so i would uh rat rod build rat rod custom <laughs> custom rat rod there's all kinds of ways to do it but i would focus on that for a while and maybe become like the 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 authority on rat rods and you'll probably your ch instead of so instead of just a car channel i would be a rat rod yeah, and and a challenge for the community right now is to say rat rods ten times fast. <laughs> Next channel, home tech reviews. You just cracked two hundred subscribers. Well done, and wow, I'm seeing something very interesting at the top here, Jeremy. Uh, this channel. Oh, I think this is right. This is an excellent example of a channel that has found its focus and is crushing it. So let's just scroll down a little bit here, folks. We see videos on uh, the Huey Mate uh, phone or on a watch and on an energy saving device. Uh, these were all a month ago. Um, so different topics, video creator trying to find their niche. We get to the Samsung Galaxy Tab S5e. Now it's probably not the most sexy uh, piece of tech that's coming out here. And Leron's probably looking at this and thinking, oh wow, I need to jump on this topic because this is something I could capitalize on. So the first video gets 500 views, which is a lot more popular than anything else that is done on the channel. Next video, 7,000 views. And look at what they've done in the past week. Everything on one single topic, the Galaxy Tab S5e. I would say at this point, the video creator is the ambassador, the authority for this particular topic. He's hustled, he's found the one that's clicked, and now he's going after it time and time again. What do you think, Jeremy, here? I think this is a channel with like 200 subscribers, but each video is getting a thousand percent more views and subscribers. All this channel needs to do is just double down, consume this con um, uh, device as much as possible. Yeah, a lot of I hear from a lot of creators that you can no longer be successful on YouTube because that time has has passed. Right? Mm. There's so much competition for smartphones yeah. or tech, and uh, we have a guy here, uh, Leron, that um, he has went from like five or six thousand subscribers when he started, uh, you know, seven, eight, nine months ago. And now he's at what, like 12 or 13,000 subscribers, 15, I think now. Yeah. Doing this type of tech channel. And uh, let me just tell you with 200 subscribers, getting over a thousand yeah, that's incredible, views isn't it? Yeah. per video just tells 
you guys that don't believe that channels can start from scratch today and make it really big, you're wrong. But we do believe it's going to be easier to get big if you're focusing and not just focusing on phones, but specifically if you're going to do a series, like for example, I started my new channel focus seven, six or seven weeks ago and um, I'm going to do skateboarding, but I'm not just going to be doing skateboarding. I'm going to do the sub niche of like how to skateboard or, you know, getting started skateboarding. <clears throat> and I'm going to go make a hundred videos on that topic. Yeah. If this person keeps on doubling down on the success, they will be a hundred thousand sub channel a few years from now. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, this is something I've done in the past. I think back in the day, mine was the Asus Transformer Prime and the Nexus seven tablet i believe i just made as many po videos as humanly possible in the few months during its release and after its release and you've just got that momentum now uh there's obviously going to be a question at some point is as to when do you pivot but for me now right now I, I, this would be like the the, the um the harvest the, the the golden moment where as much content as you can put out just put it out and like ideas might be like whether you can use a, a usb dongle with this like memory cards comparisons as you're already doing uh seeing if there's any specific problems with this tablet and creating a solutions for that but yeah i agree jeremy i mean the there's a lot of things that this channel can improve, certainly in terms of thumbnails. They're maybe looking a little bit, um, again, there's, there's work that could be done, isn't there? Like, uh, I'd just say busy. More yeah, more, more busy. More, there could be more vibrant. Zoom in a little bit onto what you're focusing on particular, on each of the ones. But the fact is you have a focus and you have momentum and that trumps everything right now. So just keep churning out the content as quickly as possible on every aspect of this device. And uh, congratulations to your home tech. I think you're, you're off to a great start on the channel and keep it up. Proper sly then. Uh, this channel has just 30 subscribers. But Jeremy, I'm going to let you loose with the quality of these thumbnails. Wow. Yeah, th thumbnails are phenomenal. It would be better if you stayed with one theme of the background though so that people get a sense and understand what your channel design looks like so let's just say like the second thumbnail with the orange and bluish background if yeah. every one of your thumbnails had that background people would then know it's your channel so I would say that's the only thing uh, that is majorly wrong in my opinion with your design is every thumbnail individually looks like completely different channels now you so, see i just i just i just want to start there because this is the point where uh, we're going to give first impressions and i'm going to counter that one a little bit jeremy okay. because i think i think you're absolutely right the thumbnails are phenomenal what i think uh creates the consistency here are some subtle things like the stroke effect which is on most of these and the font is pretty much uniform in all of these thumbnails which gives which i think connects them all a little bit and another thing to potentially consider here is that depending on the device might require a different color branding potentially. So I'm, I, I, I obviously I agree with you as well. And that's uh, what we do at vidIQ. Obviously, there's a very strong color scheme there. But I think sometimes when the thumbnails are so strong, there may be a little bit of room for interpretation. But I do not disagree with what you're saying. I can completely understand your point of view from there. Please continue. All right. So uh, the... The other thing I would say is this, I mean, with 29 subscribers, they're getting pretty decent views. Mm. Um, you know, it looks like the channel is about a month old. Yeah. Um, I would say find your focus. Absolutely. They're in a the hustle stage at the moment, are they? And figure out what you love to do and what people like to respond to and have fun on this journey. Being a creator is really hard. The difference between where you are and where a famous person is, is just five years of hustle. Yeah, and exposure. I think now on this particular one, just because we're looking at such strong thumbnails, I'm in, and it looks as if you're following trending topics as well in terms of uh, limited edition switches and possibly ending production and new PlayStation 5 details. I would just want to click on one of these videos and see if the video production is as high as the thumbnails. Just purely out of intrigue, so let's take a look. Hey, what's up guys? Before we get into this video, if you could just give this video a like and subscribe, I really appreciate it and it really helps out the channel. 
I've already talked about limited edition Nintendo Switch bundles that you should buy right in the dark. So there's like some cardboard. commentary on it. Uh, it also and I think they use the Nintendo mostly, Switch logo on the dark uh, and on the back of the Switch. Uh, images with the logo and of product Nintendo Labo. and a couple of uh, only videos. Labo creators so contest. I guess there may be one concern here, Jeremy, that this creator might stumble into. Um, copyright issues potentially in the future uh, with this sort of stuff. Um, I, I guess what we're saying here is that you, the video creator may want to get in front of a camera and talk uh, directly to camera and have maybe stuff just sort of appearing in the top left-hand corner, almost like make it a news thing. Uh, oops, sorry, I wasn't supposed to do it then. Any Any thoughts on that just in terms of video production that we saw? Yeah, absolutely. Give me one second. I'll let you take the next one. Okay, I'll move on to the next one then. Uh, this is uh, LHI Productions, and this channel has over 100 subscribers. And uh, you know what? I think I'm getting a little bit of deja vu here. I think we've looked at this channel before, maybe in the past, and it looks as if it's about uh, pretend. It looks as if it's like forging uh, hooks and steelworks. So I guess my question is here, you're building awesome stuff and it looks as if it's to do with tools of some kind, but I'm not really getting a strong enough vibe, certainly in your channel banner and through your channel name. And then the thumbnails are telling me that you're looking at different topics, maybe like shooting stuff with a shotgun and then an anvil and some sort of keychain here and then a hot dog fork. So... What is your channel specifically about? This is where I'm going to have to do a bit more investigation. And it says you're an awesome blacksmith with projects. And the videos are for entertainment, so there's no... Um, which is fine. So I think maybe there needs to be a stronger element or storytelling of the blacksmith involved in potentially building these uh, items. I think Jeremy's come back now. I can hear him um, rustling around in the background. Is that right, Jeremy? Absolutely. Sorry yeah, about right. that. Yeah, so we, we, I was just trying to find out what this channel is about. I think we've seen this one before, but I think in terms of the focus, I think the channel knows what their focus is, but it's not being translated or communicated to the viewer. Would you agree with that? I mean, what would you say this channel yeah, is about? Yeah, and last time we audited this channel, I recommended that on the banner, you basically said like whatever forging or whatever the thing is you do, like metal forging, I think, I like, uh, as a value proposition, building awesome stuff is fine, but that needs to be visually communicated as well, doesn't it? I, well, I, I don't think that's saying. enough. Yeah. Because I, building is like thousands of things. I think that would not actually do very well to find your niche. So, my suggestion would actually be how to metal, metal forge at home or something that specific. And then I would have a visual of him forging. Um, you know, like pouring the liquid or whatever. Um, it has to be the action shot of, a, of him holding a hammer, doesn't it? And then like some red sparks coming out from whatever it is he's just uh, hit. And then in front of every single title, I would actually have like DIY metal forging or whatever people are searching for. And then what the video is about. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good one. Like I, I who is searching for two pound cross peen hammer? Uh I'm going to search for that now and see what results we come up with. Cross peen hammer. <laughs> so, it does, so it does get quite a lot of results, actually, surprisingly. Um, but I think, yeah, it, I mean, that as a thumbnail is far more in, in effective, isn't it? I would say. But the, even the, forging, the yeah, result. forging a cross peen hammer, that's, yeah. that's huge because you know exactly what's going on. It's yeah. hot. It's it just those thumbnails are phenomenal. Some of yeah. them. And uh, one final thing, uh, always be careful with red fonts on thumbnails because red does not contrast really well on most thumbnails. So change it to a different font, which you have done in this one, for example. And uh, yeah, um, but best of luck there, uh, LHI Productions with going forward. All right, Jeremy, uh, I'll let you lead with this one, which is tech. Th Technic, photos, videos, styles from Anton Makey, nearly 200 subscribers. What are we looking at here? I would just say, honestly, there's a million channels about everything you're talking about. Can you go up back to the front, the top real quick? Yeah. So tech, photos, video, lifestyle, tutorials, unboxing, and vlogs. I would take one of those, whatever you're most passionate about, whatever is doing the best for you now, 
and I would just do one focus. And there's a million tech channels, there's a million photography channels, there's a million video channels, but you can't be all things to everyone. So I would be one thing to one type of person. Having 50,000 subscribers of a specific genre of person, people that just love photography vlogs or whatever, yeah. is going to be more powerful than having 50,000 people with one foot in and one foot out of your of all your passions. So this is why I love like fishing channels and specific gaming channels because they are doing one thing like just kayak fishing or just bass fishing and they're reaching the people that want to consume their content. What's going to happen is YouTube's not going to know who to send your channel because you do so many different types of things. And then the subscribers aren't going to be real passionate about you because you talk about so many different things. So I, I sorted by most popular, uh, assuming that this is the road you're going to go down, Jeremy. And we can see that uh, there's two videos, uh, the two of the top th three videos are about uh, drones. So it could be about drones. And now on, and then there's two videos here about the uh, a new Canon camera, uh, which rank there. So it, it is really, really a case of like picking one of these topics, or maybe you could become the authority because it looks like a German language channel. You could be the authority on Alexa. But I think what both Jeremy and I are saying is that whatever you choose, you stick to that for a number of videos. Just like as we've seen in this ex earlier example, this tech channel, which has found their hit device and they're just consuming it and unearthing every single aspect for it of it so yeah I, I agree Jeremy pick pick one of these and within one of these pick something where as Jeremy says and now I've adopted this uh, phrase two inches wide a mile deep in the content for that particular thing all right, what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about uh, something that we can do to help you uh, earn more money for your channel. And uh, it is a service that we, we kind of relaunched in the last couple of weeks. And it's all about how you've been using vidIQ to help grow your channel. But if you help other people to use vidIQ to grow their channels, you could earn money from that. So Jeremy, if you could just tell us a little bit about the affiliate program, that'd be fantastic as I load up some more channels in the background. Yeah, so we, if you go to vidIQ.com slash affiliate, I'll put this in the chat here in a second. But essentially we've relaunched this. It actually relaunches officially tomorrow. And we have three levels of affiliates. We're gonna have an associate, an influencer, and an ambassador. What's really cool is if you sell 51 memberships to vidIQ, then you'll get vidIQ for free. Um, you can actually be on, you'll get your own URL on vidIQ. Uh, you'll actually be, uh, you'll qualify to be on Tube Talk, our new podcast. You'll qualify to write a blog post for us. You'll qualify to be on our YouTube channel. Um, so there's a lot of benefits be, to becoming um, an, an affiliate beyond just the money. We actually pay quite well. And, um, you know, our, our boost software is, is not really expensive, but it's not inexpensive either. So uh, we have people making a lot of money every month just letting their audiences passively know about our program. So I'll put that into the chat now, but it's vidIQ.com slash affiliate. Beyond just making passive income, there's a lot of other benefits. So we'd love uh, and hope you check it out. Yeah. So folks, if you, if you th think that you could do a better job auditing channels and you fancy a shot at this, uh, if you are an affiliate, you could end up being with either myself or Jeremy auditing channels. If you if this type of thing really excites you and you can share your wisdom back with the vidIQ community, that's something that we want to do in the future is have guest auditors uh, on every Tuesday. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a very short break uh, to tell you a little bit more about the affiliate program. And when we come back, of course, we will be auditing more of your channels back soon. Hello, I'm Rob and welcome to vidIQ. You may have seen me on the vidIQ YouTube channel. I'm a video creator just like you, and we all understand the importance of diversifying our income so we're not solely reliant on YouTube AdSense because it can disappear just like that.
That's where vidIQ's affiliate program can play a role. We've helped you grow your channel, now let us help you earn an income. By sharing the power of vidIQ with your audience, you can earn passive income that tops up your bank account even when you sleep. And let's face it, who doesn't want to wake up to more cash? But we're not just about making money, we want to make you part of a vidIQ family. As more people sign up to vidIQ through your affiliate program, you will gain more free perks from us that include expert one-on-one -on -one consultation for your YouTube channel, a custom vidIQ URL and free access to our top tier vidIQ boost package. And once you are part of the vidIQ family, we want you to share your wisdom. Imagine guest hosting on the vidIQ channel, which has over 300,000 subscribers, being interviewed for the vidIQ podcast, or writing a post on the vidIQ blog. We reach over a million people through vidIQ, and you could have access to that audience. And since we know you love vidIQ, you could help shape our future with early beta access to our brand new tools. On behalf of everybody here at vidIQ, thank you for joining the program, but more importantly, welcome to the family. And that is our affiliate program. There are uh, links uh, everywhere. And uh, yeah, as I think Jeremy said, it officially launches tomorrow, but people can check out the um, page today. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, then. So let's get back to some uh, channel audits. If you are, of course, enjoying what we're doing today, make sure to give this video or live stream a thumbs up. Share it with anybody who may find it useful. And, of course, subscribe because you will kind of get a little indicator down here welcoming you to vidIQ. All right, Jeremy, let's take a look at some more channels. And uh, this one catch, caught my eye uh, as Margaret... Margot Lutt uh, subscribes. This one caught my eye as... Uh, you can't see my screen in a moment, can you? Sorry. Let me just press a couple of buttons. Can you see my screen now? Yep. Yep, okay. So this one looks to be like a, um, a potentially either explaining or debunking or supporting conspiracy theories, which is a quite a hot topic here on YouTube because I think a couple of months ago YouTube said that they may be... Uh, suppressing what they might call conspiracy content a little bit to make sure that they're not seen to be misinforming public and and having these episodes where people get after clicking one video they get sent down a rabbit hole into all these areas. I'm not necessarily I'm not saying that this channel is part of a problem, but I think it creates a challenge for such a uh, channel. But what are we generally seeing here in terms of the content that they have? And the thumbnails, they look pretty good to me on, on the surface. Absolutely. And, and I would be careful with words like conspiracy. Uh, I would Google this and really understand what YouTube is intent is here. But uh, in well, the it's, future... It's it's interesting you say that, Sarah, because I can't really see conspiracy in the titles or, or the channel, but when I looked at it, that's kind of the vibe I got. So it's, it's almost like, as you said, yeah. they're not including that as a keyword, but it's I'd kind of... I'd be careful sort of for topic. sure. I mean, yeah. it's the, this type of channel... YouTube will be going after you eventually. Um, so this is black government project, secret te technologies, that type of thing that we're looking at with this channel. But <laughs> but I will say that the thumbnails are phenomenal. Um, if possible, I would have less text, like Japanese bomb asteroid. That's really good. Mm -hmm. um, I would not have more text than that in general. Um, I just think it's a little too busy. But uh, really, really, really good thumbnails all in all. The, his um, face is the yeah. consistency. He's he's taking it to the next level, isn't he? We're like wearing yeah. uh, almost wearing props. Like uh, a lot of YouTubers just sort of point ironically at the camera in some way, but this guy's uh, certainly getting into the vibe here. Even look, like, even uh, pho photoshopping an astronaut's helmet on his head, which is brilliant. Really good stuff. Uh, really well done. I I like the banner a lot. Mm -hmm, yeah. And um, I don't think it really has to be explained because I mean we kind of get you know from looking at the banner then some of the thumbnails you kind of get what this is about really quickly. And uh, you should definitely check out a buddy of mine. Um, I helped him grow a little bit. He's uh, answerswithjoe.com or answers with Joe on YouTube. He is phenomenal at this type of stuff. And I would really study hit from his thumbnails to everything. He's, 
he's world class. Is a would you describe him as an explainer uh, channel in uh, an educational explainer channel in that sense? I would I would say it's it's half this and half uh, science. Yeah. Uh, okay, so f- just finally, as we look at this channel, it has seven thousand subscribers, and uh, views generally range in the uh, one thousand fifteen hundred. So, uh, fairly solid. I expected the channel to be a little more spiky because the con because the content is sort of jumping from uh, many different topics within this genre. I would say so. I think that's strong to, from a certain point of view. Uh, I guess the next question is: Are there any trending? Areas of interest that you may be able to look at, which are really hot topics right now. I I, I don't know, um, but so, certainly something to consider. Hey Rob, can you yeah. actually show everyone the most viewed tool real quick? Oh uh, yes, absolutely. So on the left hand side, uh, always fingers crossed at this point to make sure that it's working uh, correctly. And sometimes we get some very unusual results here. Uh, but yeah, that, so what we wanted to talk about really here, Jeremy, with our most viewed tool. Um, well, really just wanted to show you guys how powerful this could be. So if you type in, for example, Fortnite, um, we, our tool, so YouTube back like five, six, seven years ago, used to actually show you lists of what was doing the best on YouTube. Now those are kind of curated. So with our tool, you can actually see based on the amount of subscribers you have yeah, or, so- you know, all kinds of really cool filters. You can actually see what videos are doing the best based on the keywords you type in here on all of YouTube. So you can even do it by country. So what I would do is I would study this often and I would see what is doing really well in in theories and, you know, conspiracy type stuff and use this tool often so that you really get ahead of trends. Yeah, so uh, as an example, I am now filtered here. The search term is Fortnite, but I've also applied the filter of channels between one and 10,000 subscribers to really help understand the videos that are are doing well in your bracket channel size. And then when you start to see videos on Fortnite that have like 4,000 views and the channel's got 4,000 subs, that's performed well. 3,000 subs, 6,000 views, so double there. Like how to edit. We we talked about this a little last week, didn't we? Like uh, Fortnite channels or gaming channels focusing on how to make better controller setups. That seems to be a little bit of a niche thing that's going on in Fortnite night there and you're absolutely right this this tool helps us find that and this is just in my country in canada so well if we did that for all we might even get some more fantastic results here yeah so this is what we're looking at here channel with seven thousand subscribers has a video with sixty thousand views like what's going on there and it looks as if it's uh, again it's more controller setups for fortnite that's really weird that seems to be a really trending topic in the world of Fortnite, but yeah. And if you didn't use this tool, you probably wouldn't know that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good, good suggestion there, Jeremy. And you're saying apply uh, beyond theory could maybe use such a thing uh, to help him follow what stories might be trending a little bit in his area. And and I think trending stories is 90% of the success of a channel like this. Yeah. All right, we have uh, what we would call our first gaming channel here, River Fox 9939288. Why have you got those numbers at the end of your channel name? Just a query. Congratulations in advance on hitting 1,000 subscribers. Uh, My question to you then is, what is your focus? And I think I can see the focus, which is Plankerton, whatever that is. Presumably it's a game of some sort. Uh, So we can see what your channel focus is. You're not getting that. It looks okay. So it maybe looks like a offshoot of Fortnite that we have here. Uh, But the views aren't really matching up to the subscriber counts. It could be because you've uh, pivoted. You've decided to focus on this now at Fortnite. It may have been something else in the past. Uh, What do we think is missing here, Jeremy? I think what I would say is there's a lack of consistency. I can see the focus, but I can't see the consistency. Each of these thumbnails that I look at are completely different in style and design, so I'm not getting the the channel vibe from this. Yeah, and the the thumbnails themselves are decent, but because they don't have like a a, a brand, Mm. you would not know this thumbnail from that thumbnail. You would think every single one of these thumbnails almost looks like a whole different new channel. Um, And that's going to really cause problems with loyalty and people clicking on your videos versus someone else's long term. Yep. 
let's just quickly focus on if you had any breakout videos that you could that could help focus you. Uh, and now again, I'm getting deja vu. I think we were talking we were talking to this channel early, uh, maybe last month, and I had a lot of um, success with Stonewood Quests on Fortnite. I guess maybe that's ended now, which is why you've gone on to this Plankerton uh, content. And maybe it's just not work. It's you're just not hitting. You're just not getting that um, push from YouTube. I, I think credit to you for looking at this topic for a, a series of videos. Um, maybe they're just not quite hitting what they need to. And practice, it's like testing. Maybe this test hasn't worked quite as well as your previous one. So maybe it's time to look at something else on on Fortnite. I could be wrong about that, but it just it looks as if. Uh, for whatever reason, these videos aren't as successful as your previous ones. And we always say, uh, double down on a particular topic, but this one isn't quite uh, hitting the, the right marks for you potentially there. We are looking at next, uh, Beauty Inc. 4C. And this is a beauty channel which I think lies in, this beauty and hair uh, style channel, which lies in uh, Jeremy's uh, expertise. So Jeremy, what do we say about this channel, which is a couple of months old, nearly a thousand subscribers, some good stuff going on here, it looks like. Yeah, I would say for a few months old, for, uh, almost a thousand subscribers, you are killing it. So yeah. just keep on making tutorials one of my good friends and someone that lives a few miles from me is the founder and owner of cute girls hairstyles they are the biggest hairstyle tutorial youtube channel in the world with over a billion views and six million subscribers so definitely study what they do you know you always want to look at the best in the world and get ideas from thumbnails to titles to what they're doing with their tags and their descriptions and content and really understand. When um, I did strategy for some of the largest hair companies in the world, and the, the biggest thing that helped me grow these channels was doing something, doing a series of videos, let's say 50 or 100 videos on a very specific thing. Yeah. Um, so I would say like natural hair, um, natural African American hair, there's all kinds of, of women looking for tutorials on natural hair. Um, and I would, I would definitely go understand using the vidIQ tool or other tools. I would go figure out exactly what people are searching for. And then I would have a broader category. So for example, can you in search real quick, can you just type in natural hair and let's see what auto populates. Yes. So natural hairstyles for black women. What Same if, result, yeah. Yeah, what if you did 20 videos that started, all 20 videos started with natural hairstyles for black women and then what the hairstyle was? Yeah. So natural hairstyles for black women, updo, natural hairstyles for black women, you know, and and imagine being able, also look at these thumbnails. They're so yeah, awesome. Yeah, so They're phenomenal. phenomenal. Yeah. And, and, and the before and, also, and just, after pictures are really, really smart. I would say there's a window of opportunity here as well, because the small channels, like this one with 600 subscribers, a hundred thousand views. A yeah. lot of the um, videos here that are ranking have more views and subscribers. So that's always a telltale sign that there's an area of opportunity. Yeah. Sorry, Jeremy, um, do can finish what you were saying. So up your thumbnail game. Make a series of videos specifically around what people are searching for. Um, we gave you what our advice would be. I would make a series of videos on natural something hair for, for, black, uh, for black women. Yeah. Um, and I would make, you know, 20 or 30 different videos and tutorials on that. I would really up your thumbnail game. And for how long you've been doing this, you are absolutely killing it. Um, I want you to contact us once you hit 10,000 subscribers <laughs> and we will uh, we'll try to feature you on our blog. Jeremy is pretty confident that this channel is going to blow up. And I think, yeah, I, I just want to focus on the thumbnails a little bit because I think the, uh, the concept and the ideas here are on point. They are superb. And it's just the execution, isn't it, that needs just nailing down a little bit. For example, you were saying like before and after ones are always really, uh, really good ideas for thumbnails. Yeah. And we have this idea here, but I think the video creator just needs to um, 
make the thumbnail, the imagery a little better. J just because all I'm seeing here is like a, sing a single black color on a white background. And sometimes I'm not seeing the qu quite seeing the detail like in, right. in this this one here. So and and we were looking at. The, the thumbnails where this one where the lighting is just absolutely perfect so you can see the detail yeah. i think that's what you the you need to be um going after uh, for your thumbnails just to get them to the next level they're already like six seven out of ten uh and it just requires a couple of tweaks to get it to nine ten out of ten and that's when you'll see your channel uh, really blow up as uh, jeremy uh, seems to believe uh, all right so that's a, that was a, a really good example of a channel there that's doing really that has a good potential and some really good stuff going Going on there for a for a new channel. Oh, and one thing I would also say, Jeremy, and I think you'll agree with this: the channel banner doesn't relate at all to the thumbnails at this point. Yeah, I think it needs to be you. Yeah. Um, and I would say, you know, beauty i n four c, uh, you know, natural hair tips for black women or something mm -hmm. like that. Boom, there we are. All right, we've got another thing to tell you about uh, this week, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, the vidIQ channel uh, and our marketing team in terms of content, we have just gone bonkers because we want to try and offer you as much content as possible. Uh, we uh, have the YouTube channel, which I'm sure you all know and love, and thank you very much for continuing to love that. But we also have blogs now. So if you go to vidIQ.com, click on the blog section, we have our wonderful uh, content writer Carla who is turning a lot of our video content into really detailed uh, tips and tricks and guides and also other features such as how to do your taxes. If you're reading it now in the US I think you're probably too late but make sure to uh, stick around for next year when you might find that really useful. But also and again I just wanted Jeremy to elaborate a little bit on this, uh, we have new audio features uh, coming onto vidIQ. So not only can you watch vidIQ but you can use your cans as I think they're called in the business and listen to vidIQ podcast. Jeremy, tell us a little bit more about this because it was your, I guess, brainchild and your uh, little baby for the last couple of years. Yeah. So Tube Talk, one of the largest YouTube podcasts and video marketing podcasts in the world. Uh, we just brought it to vidIQ. Um, I guess it was last Thursday is when it launched. So anywhere you listen to podcasts, Stitcher, or iTunes, or anywhere that that iTunes, uh, podcasts are available, you can download Tube Talk, the vidIQ video marketing podcast. We have some of the best guests in the world, some of the biggest YouTube creators, um, Sean Canal and Benji and all these phenomenal people uh, we're interviewing every week. So you can listen to their stories of success and how they're able to crush YouTube. So definitely check out Tube Talk. It's a podcast with a lot of listens to over the last few years. Myself, Tim Schmoyer, Dane Golden, and a few others uh, had this podcast for the last five years. So it's really cool that our one and only Leron uh, is taking this over and it's a great listen. I've just seen in the comments here that Shaka Fishing is looking forward to it. He's going to jump on a podcast and we have a little bit of a treat for you here. This is a very small clip from uh, the first relaunch episode, uh, which is Leron talking to his guest about the uh, key principles of YouTube. Take a listen. And they'll get on Facebook and um, go into these these groups and be like, hey, what, what's going on with my channel? What's wrong with this? Why why isn't it working? I hate YouTube. I'm going to quit YouTube. This is <laughs> terrible. No, but they're not giving me any views. And the whole thing, like you just said, Lee Ron, is, and this is what I tell every single one of my clients is stop focusing on this video and just start working on the next one because every day is another day to put more real estate, to put more content on YouTube and have another opportunity for success. So that was just a snippet of Scott Simpson and his five principles on YouTube to listen to the whole thing, uh, which is, I think, about 40 minutes long. Uh, you can get it from all good podcast service providers and some rubbish ones as well. <laughs> all right. And of course, it is free to download. And as Jeremy said, it's tied into the old Chew Top, isn't it? So even though you might be subscribing for this latest edition, there's like 200 episodes already in there, isn't there? To, to, yeah. Um, for, for like the 180 something or something. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. 
So we hope uh, we hope you can join you can join uh, Liron on that um, on that podcast. Let's get into some more audits, and we're going to go for the quick fire round here because uh, what what we tend to do here is we try to bunch up the gaming channels because we get a lot of submissions for gaming channels. Uh, so we like to look at those all at once to give you some very uh, quick uh, tips because they all tend to be more or less on the same theme. So Jeremy, if you are ready, if I press the correct button, which is that one, is give me a thumbs up. I will share my screen again. And Jeremy, can you see that screen? Yes. Okay, so if I just press that button, I'm just trying to find this first one that I was going to look at, which was that one. Okay, so let's jump into our quickfire gaming audit round, and we'll start with uh, reviews and unboxings, cookie cubing, tips and tutorials. Uh, now, this is a, uh, it's kind of like a deviation from a gaming channel, but it it's all it looks to be like Rubik's cubes. When I first saw it, I thought it was a Minecraft channel, so this is kind of why it's confused me a little bit and put me into the gaming section. But yeah, what do you think of this one? It seems like a really interesting niche and focus we have here for a channel. Physical gaming in 2019 is a cool concept. <laughs> Who would have thought? Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Um, you know, there's a lot of resurgence of of physical games, and and I think it's a great idea. So. Um, Getting people to not be on the computer is always a good idea. I guess, you know, you're missing a Rubik's Cube. That's that a, that a good point, isn't it? Yeah. Type in, unsearch real quick, just type in Rubik's Cube. I will do just that. So, uh -huh. for example, wow. how to solve the blank, blank, blank Rubik's Cube. Rubik's Cube, tutorial, simple method, easy. Honestly, I think you're missing like 90% of yeah, what people are searching that's for within Rubik's Cubes. So the first thing I would do is I would use the words Rubik's Cube and then whatever people are searching for. Solve, easy way, uh, three by three, whatever people are searching for. I would definitely add that to every one of your titles from now on. Mm, and... Yep. Um, I think that I would make playlists with Rubik's Cube, Rubik's Cube tutorials, Rubik's Cube easy way. And I would really just double down on making sure that you have such a niche channel, but because of the way you're doing tags and titles and uh, descriptions and, uh, you know, playlists, I, I feel like you're missing 99% of your potential customer or, you know, viewer base. Fantastic point. Yeah, it's like you have the focus, you just haven't got the, you, you're just not directing people towards your content yet. You haven't got the the crucial keyword, which is Rubik's. And you, I just clicked on the about section and you do say, I love Rubik's cubes. And that's the only place you say it. It looks like on, on in fact, let's just do, I've just done a quick control F to try and find Rubik's. And the only place I can find it is where I just searched in a title. So Top tip there, Jeremy. Uh, I think the rest of the channel has a lot of potential there. And they're already getting views. I mean, the channel's only two yeah. months old. And normally, I would not recommend this. But in your case, I'd go back through every single video and, t and type Ooh. in Rubik's Cube in the beginning of the title. Interesting. Yeah. Fascinating stuff there. All right. Let's move on. We've got uh, Hectic Gaming, who I think we welcomed at the beginning of this live stream. I do hope you are still here. Uh, 34 subscribers. This channel does actually look to be a Minecraft channel. So uh, we're now playing with blocks in the virtual world. What a wonderful segue, Jeremy. It's almost as if, uh, as if I planned this. Uh, I guess the question here for any channel that's competing in a huge broad topic, Minecraft being uh, this, what is going to separate you from the competition? And just having titles such as Minecraft Survival, uh, Minecraft Live, Minecraft A Long Time, I'm not sure that's going to cut the mustard. You've done some live streams as well, which I think is always perhaps the wrong way to go about starting a channel. I think uh, live streams are very much community content and you need to bring them in when you have a bit of an audience. You have a focus, obviously Minecraft is it, along with, as I always incorrectly pronounce, Roblox uh, Gaming. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we've pretty much um, knowing here what we need to suggest, Jeremy, in terms of Minecraft is your focus, but what within Minecraft, where it's a particular type of server, to a particular type of thing you're building, control settings and that sort of thing, that's where this creator needs to be looking. Yeah, you nailed it. 
I nailed it. All right, then, Jeremy, you can nail this one, which is Professor Ari. 100 subscribers. What are we looking at here? I don't know because the banner says nothing. It shows yeah. nothing and it doesn't mean anything to me. Um, so I would put your face on the banner. I'd put what your channel name is on the banner and what your channel focus is. Um, also, you're all over the place on what you're talking about from PewDiePie, nine-year-old yeah. armies to League of Legends. So I would find your passion and I would, I would focus. And um, your thumbnails are very decent. I would just make sure that they all look similar to each other and establish a brand colors uh, for your thumbnails. Um, and then I, I will say even on like, for example, League of Legends, I don't think your titles have enough information for you to rank as a smaller channel. Yeah, it, it, it is. It is just a game, isn't it? Where it needs to be the game and something within that game that really helps. And even if Nautilus, if I pronounce that right, is a character in the game, what are you trying to tell us about this character? Is it really powerful or is it very hard to get? Uh, how should you use this character? There, there needs to be more... A, dis a descriptive element, doesn't there, in the in the film? Because it's a twenty minute video, but the thumbnail and the title tell us very little about what's in those twenty minutes. And I can tell you right now, if you go create content that people are searching for, like um, player controls and League of Legends, blah blah blah, uh, two thousand nineteen, <laughs> you'll probably quadruple your your normal view ratios yeah. just by focusing. Just remember, folks, don't include blah, blah, blah in your title. That I guarantee you that part of the keywords will not work. Although, <laughs> although saying that, you know what I'm going to do, Jeremy, now? Type in blah, blah, blah. I'm going to type in blah, blah, blah and look at the results. <laughs> and let's see if there's a channel that's all about blah, blah, blah. Yeah, look, video with 300 million views. Blah, 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 official music. <laughs> You know, it would be really cool <laughs> if we made a contest for our users yeah. and we made up a word and we told we figured out who could rank number one for the word. Wow, that is, oh, Don't you interesting. Like that? Maybe we should save up for the Q&A one. Yeah, give them a, like, we'll have a challenge, like, whether it's um, 4 billion organic views, who can rank number one for that? <laughs> <laughs> and then for me, what would it be? Automobile, autom automotive vehicles or something like that. Who can ra rank number one for the worst phrase that either Jeremy and I use in the live stream? All right, so we're getting distracted here. Uh, Rizzo Gamer 44. I think this pretty much follows a similar theme as to what we were just talking about, looking at the top videos. you got some stuff about Star Wars animation. you got some stuff about Avengers, so it looks as if you were trying to jump on the topic a little bit, which is great. But then we've got Sonic the Hedgehog live action movie trailer. So completely different uh, topic here. And is this reactions to trailers or is it something to do with... I think I don't think it's got anything to do with video games. I thought it was a gaming channel to begin with, although there's some Roblox stuff in there as well. So, and you say it's a gaming channel, but then you got movie stuff. So yeah, find your focus. If it's about gaming, that's great. What game are you going to focus on? Once you've decided on the game that you're focusing on, what topic within that game? If it's about Avengers Endgame, that's fine. There's going to be a lot of content and a competition there. Can you find out some really interesting information about Bruce Banner in that without spoiling it for everybody who's looking forward to watching the content? So I think definitely focus is what we're going to target there. Because with your 250 subscribers, you're getting views of less than 10. So that the audience that you have is not resonating to your content. This one here with Star Wars, like every time I look at Star Wars, which has got 200 views, 270 views, uh, those seem to be the videos that are performing slightly better. So that could potentially be your focus, especially with the Star Wars trailer just coming out and the new theme park that's opening up at Disney World. Is there anything that you can cover on those particular uh, topics? And the only Jer thing I see on that th one thing to add is yep. just a lawsuit. <laughs> so, I get it because you're thinking of copyright. Uh, it's yeah. all like little clips and stuff from Be uh, careful. From stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, and I guess uh, it's, it's not been edited in any way, which is um, another sign that it could be it's just lifted straight from its original source all right jeremy what do we got here with ifusion z the fusionators at four thousand subscribers all right well congratulations on getting four thousand yep. subscribers that's pretty cool can you it do is. me a favor and sort by most of you to no, oh, jeremy's taking the easy way out here he's going to look at what your most Always. popular videos are and double down on that um Okay, so, so there's, there's no breakout videos for a four thousand channel, which is yeah, cute, it really which is doesn't seem. Um, 
Okay, go back to the normal newest video of you. So, yeah, d- so the things that they were doing well, and they all seem to be in, uh, in like seven to nine months ago, look to be, I would guess, uh, is it Battlefield maybe? Black uh, Ops? You, you know, oh, Black Ops, yeah. <laughs> Jeremy's a gaming expert here. Yeah, uh, right. Call of Duty uh, type of things. But now... Uh, the focus seems to be on Black Ops 3, it looks the, like. The, the new thumbnails ways. are beautiful. I really I, like them. Yeah, I think there's something interesting here, isn't it? It is just yeah. it is just a uh, freeze frame from the video, but it's always focusing on the weapon in hand, and I find that really intriguing as a thumbnail. I'm drawn towards that. I do too, and, and you know, as someone, you could probably pretty quickly know what game that is if you're a real nerd with the game, right? So... I like it. It's unique. It's colorful. It's interesting. I don't know if it would work well, but I personally like it. Last thing I'm going to look at here. I've just noticed. Look at all of these videos here, Jeremy. What are all these videos? Yeah, I mean, I would say that I don't like, I never like to repeat the thumbnail. Well, they're all live streams. That's what I'm noticing uh, here. Every single one is over an hour long. And then if I if we go back to the, oops, if we go to the most popular ones, I'm just interested in if those were live streams as well. And the answer is oh, although that surprises me. I thought that the I thought the uh, the be on demand content which was doing a lot better. So this is exclusively a live streaming channel. So that again raises a question: Are you live streaming? How do you on how do you how can you tell real quickly? Uh, but well, just from the length of the videos. Oh, okay. Like, the, the the five. The, I like, mean, it may not be live streaming. They may true. Have yeah, let's have a look. It. Uh, so it's, it does say streamed live okay. or if I jump cool. on one of them. Um, so, it, yeah, my question is then, do you have a, a, a Twitch account where maybe you're streaming to Twitch and then also to YouTube, something along those lines? Uh, the question may be, is YouTube the right platform for you? And is it worth experimenting, taking highlights from your live streams and putting them on here just to see what happens uh, as, a, as an idea? But I know that then requires editing. Um, it just seems like the... the the channel's a little stuck at the moment with 4,000 subscribers not getting that many views. And maybe it's because people subscribe for that one live stream that you were doing and now you've moved on to something else. All right, uh, we're our first uh, Fortnite-centric channel, I would say, here. Jeremy, and we can immediately spot it's a Fortnite channel, can we not, with the characters in the banner. And the colours. And the colours. Um, so I, what I would say here is that with these thumbnails at the top here, they're all... Seven out of ten thumbnails. The problem is that there are tens of thousands of video creators making Fortnite channels with the same type of thumbnails that are all seven out of ten. This getting this sort of logo and then one of the characters doing a salute or something. And that is perhaps not enough. I I know whenever we talk about a, a Fortnite channel, there's always an extra challenge for that creator because they're up against so many other people. How do they differentiate themselves? And this, just from the first impressions point of view, looks like a another Fortnite channel. And then I ask the question, why should I watch this content versus somebody else's? Uh, like, I'm looking at what's in here, like the Easter rabbit is on your side. There's something Endgame, or I guess linked to Avengers. What is going to give you that edge? So... As we often do, we're going to sort by most viewed. And there isn't anything yet there that's jumped out on your channel. So maybe uh, the titles need a bit of tweaking and so on. Uh, any other thoughts there, Jeremy, as, we, as we're looking at this channel? Or? Yeah, just find find what makes you unique for yeah. Fortnite. Like what's the thing that you can provide the world, whether it's entertainment or education on Fortnite that people aren't doing. If you're just another Me Too Fortnite channel, have fun enjoy it but you may not grow yeah in previous weeks jeremy and i have identified channels that focus on improving the performance of your gameplay on fortnite and very recently control mappings how to get the best control settings that's what's setting those channels unique what is your unique selling point within fortnite and now we are looking at uh, flight at gaming Subscribe for the 30 days, 30 videos in 30 days challenge. Wow, that's, I, I, I from personal experience know that that's very hard to achieve. Uh, what have we got then? Looking at Globecraft. So this is what, a twist on Minecraft potentially? Or is it a Minecraft version? Got some live streams going on here. 
Um, I think the thumbnails are generally strong here, Jeremy, would you say? There's some arrow pointing and... I would say, some... if I mean, if you type in Roblox, I would say no, they're not strong enough. Okay. Or I'm no, sorry, Minecraft, Minecraft, not Roblox. I'm confusing myself, I'm tired. Minecraft, there we are. I guess against the very top videos in, yeah, again, a very competitive... Not. A very competitive genre. Uh, they still uh, leave um, some decent, room for improvement. But I would say that they need to be a little stronger. And uh, same as what we've said before, sought by most popular. Is there anything that's really started to take off? Jump on that if there is, uh, which might be an elevated tutorial. Maybe you could become the uh, ex uh, the chief elevator creator on Minecraft as your uh, your channel focus. The CEC. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Jeremy, what are we looking at here? Uh, this is a departure from gaming now. This is Lauren. Uh, they've hidden their subscriber count, so I'm not sure how many subscribers they've got. Don't do that. Yeah. Judging well, by how many views they're getting, maybe triple digits, I would say. Right. And then, what is the channel about? Because the channel banner is of a rock and a marina. And then... I mean, I'm just going to guess here, and I'm going to probably be completely wrong, but is this about potentially African politics or black politics, or is it not about that? There's, I'm just not understanding what this is about, really. And do they own this content? And do they own this content? Because, yeah, it looks as if it might be news articles or speeches from... Um, prominent dignitaries so that's something certainly to look at and there's some videos that are getting a few more views um and maybe the last thing is that um would you just describe this as rainbow vomit font but not in a good way yeah i mean it's just it's very hard to see i would possibly have like maybe a a black box underneath white text or just make it more red is always one of the hardest colors yeah. to show up on anything. So I would possibly have white or black uh, text or a box beneath it so that it's more visible. For example, searching for my lost fa father is phenomenal because it's so visible. I'm just going to do this. Uh, oh no, hang on. I don't want to get rid of uh can't block the face, but let me just do this again. So some classic uh, Rob Wilson drawings here. Uh, Leron says that this make, makes my um, videos look like NFL um, strategy boards. Uh, but if you look at this, the channel banner to the channel icon name to the thumbnails, it feels like these come from three different channels. It's a complete Absolutely. disconnect. Yeah, there's the, no the, branding the that's consistent. I mean, within the thumbnails, yes, but how does that all link back to your channel? And maybe if we just click on the About section. Um, so what is it about? I don't know. It just talks about if it's uploaded trend. So you're uploading trending news as well, which and on you're almost preempting that people are going to th um, make copyright claims against your content. So I think there's a lot of things that you need to address potentially in your channel. And someone in chat said it looks like a fake channel. And honestly, when I first saw it, I thought it was too, could, because you have like be, the girl yeah. and then the beach scene, you know, the marina and then all this yeah. new stuff. It, it does look like a fake channel to me. All right, then. Uh, sorry if we wasted your time there, but that's how you potentially identify a fake channel. Tara Littlewood, uh, this channel is one of those where it's actually missing some components of what I would expect to see on a channel. There's no uh, playlist tab. There's no video tabs. Uh, so those need fixing. And uh, as we can see, Jeremy, this looks like a, a TikTok channel, as you might describe it, purely yep. through the title of one. I think this is just a video creator who's just started on their journey. 45 subscribers, which is awesome. Uh, find your home on YouTube and start to create more content on that. As a, an example, a room tour, you probably want a much brighter. This looks like a freeze frame from the video because we've got some black borders on a very dark image. Take that still image and use that as your thumbnail. Is there anything else we can suggest here, Jeremy? Or I think is it. Pretty yeah, I mean, a, all, all in all, I would just say things off. like room tour. You want to know what country you're in. And, you know, yeah. um, my Dallas, Texas room tour, 
teenage room tour. I don't know. You just have to get more specific on YouTube. On TikTok, it's totally different. Um, but on YouTube, it's actually more specific. And we have here Tara Support. We I've looked at this channel before, but I think it was over a year ago. And this, I believe, is a travel channel in either India or Bangladesh. And I think it's all it was about uh, train journeys and traveling from one place to another. Uh, 32,000 subscribers and some really strong view counts here, 15,000, 30,000. Some really strong stuff here, Jeremy, would you say? And some of these images, some of these thumbnails are really intriguing because you like, you pick out that. And even though it looks a little, it does look like a freeze frame from the image. I mean, you just have to say, what on earth is that? I need to click on this video to see what's going on there. I think people underestimate, like I have a, a Facebook group called Master Thumbnails and a lot, I, we put in a lot of thumbnails and people like, you know, recommend each other's uh, concepts for thumbnails. And a lot of people don't get how important intrigue is. Mm, so I yeah. would take a crappy design thumbnail that's interesting over a good design thumbnail that's boring. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to me, that just looks like an enormous... Um... I would click on that because it looks like maybe is that a car driving a bell of hay? Like what's going on? It's intriguing enough to where I click on it. Um, a lot of these are very intriguing, you know? So with the match of the titles, these are really good. What I would love to see though, is for them to develop a style that is consistent so people know it's their channel. So that might be involved like a, maybe a channel logo or some sort of color scheme perhaps in, in the videos. I mean, there is a logo I can see now, but it is in the top right hand corner, but it is so tiny that we're three minutes into looking at this channel and I've only just identified that. I think though for the, the channel certainly knows um, the content that the audience wants to watch because they, they, each of these videos don't necessarily link to each other, like traveling in Saudi Arabian street, street market, I think, and then a bus to Lahore and then a railway journey in Pakistan. There's no actual strong topic linking there other than the concept of travel perhaps in the Asian continent. But the channel's doing really well, Jeremy. So I think it's difficult really to offer a focus here because it looks as if the people are watching the content because of the the community that's built up and the journey that they're on. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, All well. right. Uh, I'm just going to check the community tab. So you are using it. Yes, you are using the community tab, which is awesome. Uh, and that's always good to see from channels. All right. That is your channel audits for this week. But I just want us to stick around for a, a couple more minutes, uh, Jeremy, because we want to help promote what we do on a Thursday. Fingers crossed with our uh, audio this week. We um, now do a brand new live stream, which we're going to do every Thursday, which is, put simply, answering your questions. Any question you ask, we will try and answer it on that uh, live stream. And to prime us for this, we're going to do a quick five minute session here. So folks, all I need you to do is type hashtag question and then type in your question in the chat. And Jeremy and I, over the next five minutes, will endeavor to answer them as accurately and as expertly as possible. As soon as I see the first one, I'm going to start the timer for five minutes. Uh, and when it does come, we will answer those questions. So where is it? Okay. Uh, number one, Martian. Hi is not a question. So once you have a question, we will try and answer one. Just waiting one to come through. So yes, hashtag question, but what's the question? All right, we've got some coming up. Right, let's go. So... Let me just put the timer on. And the first one comes from one of our moderators, which is Dr. Sten Eckbird. Would you, would putting all your videos in a series playlist be bad? I think uh, you should always have like a master playlist, which is this series playlist. And it allows you, allows when people watch it, then you are guaranteed to have your video as the next, as a watch next. That doesn't mean that you can't put those videos in another playlist, but they can only be together in one playlist as a series playlist. So I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. Obviously, it requires a bit of testing, uh, but yeah, give it a try and see what happens. Jerry, yeah. have we got... Yeah, so the only thing I would say um, is I wouldn't put all your videos in a playlist because uh, playlists 
have a concept of watch time like a video does. So they're actually looking at the total length of your playlist watch time. So you actually want people to be able to get through your playlist like they would a Amazon or a Netflix series, right? So if you have seven videos, then you'd want three to four videos to be watched to get yeah. that watch time. If you have 70 videos, that playlist will probably never do well because no one's going to watch 50 videos. It's going to be very rare. So my recommendation is seven to 12 videos max per playlist, period. What have we got next, Jeremy? Okay, the question. Rob, do you think you could take Jeremy in a wrestling match? <laughs> yes, 100%. Sure yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure I can as well. I would say, right. uh, yeah. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> the Everyday Axe. How do you think skits perform on YouTube? I think it's difficult for video creators who are first starting out on YouTube to have skits channels. I always feel as if it's hard to create a personality brand without some sort of uh, search impact already but channels have done it in the past and you I again it's a bit like the Fortnite channel what makes you um, stand out from the crowd in terms of the skits that you do uh, so think of it along those lines it's not I know that's not a great answer but I, I find it a, a really str a very difficult question to answer Jerry question, next question. what is a yep. good thumbnail vid IQ thumbnails are really good <laughs> and we've got a thumbnail series that we've just finished, so check out that um, thumbnail series. Uh, question from um, with Blade Art: What is the difference between TubeBuddy and VidIQ? VidIQ has the channel audit, which is one of the most powerful marketing tools in the world. The our competitor does not, but I will also say this. Each program has its merits, apples and oranges. If you want to try both, they should work uh, both fine together. And then you can make a decision as to which is better. Oh, and we've also got the real-time stats bar, which is personally my favorite tool in the entire universe. Next question, Jeremy. All right, how do you get to a thousand subscribers quickly? What's the answer, Jeremy? <laughs> uh, you buy them? No, I'm just kidding. It's a joke, it's a joke. Uh, no, you don't do anything in life worth it living quickly. You grind it out and you make it happen and you take a long time to get there. That's the honest truth. Uh, question, Rob, does YouTube recommend my videos immediately after I post or one day after premiere? So basically what they're asking is, how long does it take for a video to start, for YouTube to start recommending a video? Immediately is the answer and that's where you're gonna get most of your boost. You're talking about premieres. Premieres works a bit like a live stream, so they may, you may get a, a notification that sent out 30 minutes before and then when the video is live but I always tend to feel that premieres do not perform as well as just video on demand content and whenever you do a search and you see like a, a little new box next to your video that's an indication that I think the video is less than I think seven days old and you get a little bit of a boost there from YouTube as well so it's all about that initial vol velocity for a lot of videos uh, and so make sure that it's trending relevant and you're not posting too much content so you give you allow your videos to breathe a little bit which is why we generally recommend no more than one video a day question here comes from riverfox99 i won't say the rest of your name would you recommend for my thumbnails what do you recommend for my thumbnails and titles as you said they look to be on different subjects so it's just consistency getting them all to look similar in the way that your color scheme is the type of story that you're telling, like how many elements you use in each thumbnail, and if you're using fonts, using the same font, and a bit of channel branding in there as well. And Jeremy, we'll take one more question, which is... How to improve clock, uh, CPM, which is... Uh, uh, I can't talk today, sorry. It's how much money you're making per thousand when you're monetized. And uh, Rob, do you want to take this? It's, I mean, it's how do you increase it is like a fundamental question of who, which advertisers are you appealing to? And that all depends on the content. So it's, I think it's really difficult to change CPMs uh, in the sense of if I make better videos, I'll get better CPM. For example, if you're selling bed mattresses, you'll get a much higher CPM than if you're a gaming channel, just by the nature of the adverts that are gonna appear on your content. So I, I yeah, I struggle to really find a good answer to that because I'm not gonna recommend people completely change their content to fit the uh, CPMs. What I but would be looking at- But if you're new though, I would say that channel focus is really important. The more yeah. focused you are, the, more, the higher your CPMs could be. 
and think about how else you can make income in terms of branding and sponsorship deals and merch that and selling perhaps your services uh, as an individual that's where you're going to get a lot more income than worrying about if you can increase your cpm by a dollar or two and that is how questions work. We actually uh, have a form as well that you can fill out on a uh, Thursday. So we go into questions in a lot more detail. And then we have these quick fire rounds as well. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, Jeremy, we were getting a, a little cooked there as we move towards the end of this live stream. As always, it's been a pleasure. We do apologize if we were not able to get through your channel audit today, but we hope that you got all of the wonderful advice, tips and tricks from all of the channels we did look at, especially that tech channel, the one who found their niche and just double down on it. I think that was a brilliant example of how to grow a small channel. Uh, if you want to say your goodbyes, folks, we will be doing a shout outs right now. Uh, it just leaves me to say thank you, as always, to Jeremy for joining me on the live stream today. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and share this live stream and videos uh, with your fellow video creators as it may help them in the future. Jeremy, let's start with you. Who are we saying goodbye to today? Number one, Martin, Laura, Burger, Chick Wolfie, Pokemon Mikey, uh, Hayes House, Lisa Pittman, TBS Heat, Foodie Ants, Alley Creates Pursuits. Well, right. Jeremy's on a roll here. Okay, <laughs> Jeremy, I'm also saying goodbye to Jeremy since he did post in the chat. Thank you, Hayes Who's, for moderating and all the moderators have been on today, including Dr. Sten and Leron. The Everybody Acts, I'm going to try and pronounce your gay, uh, your name, sir, but I always get it wrong. Volty, the, the Dutch person who's on. We've got Wendy Live doing Exploring. We've got Nelzy, uh, Gundam Lola, Synthetic Clan, uh, the Ginger Optimist. I love that username. And random unbox Sebi, Jack Evans, Ali Crafts Pursuits, uh, Curate from Compton. Every single one of you, thank you very much for spending your valuable time with us here on YouTube today. We really do appreciate it. We hope you got something out of it. And as always, I will leave with the following words.